Welcome back to Market on Close. I'm Renita Young in for Oliver Rennick. And it's time now to get the big picture and a couple of stock picks. And to do that, we're going to bring in Burns McKinney. He's Senior Portfolio Manager at NFJ Investment Group. Burns, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Of course. Now, first, I need to get your thoughts on the market. At first, we thought we were starting out October the way that September ended. But in the end, we actually did see a little bit of movement to the upside for at least a couple of the major indices. What are you looking at today? Yeah, you know, the, the old saying goes, you know, wake me up when September ends. And uh, <laughs> it turns out that, that I'm not sure when you turn the month of the calendar that a whole lot changed. And, you know, really, we, we're, we're seeing a continuation of this trend that you know, interest rates may end up being, um, you know, remaining higher for longer. You know, it's sort of in, in many ways what we've had during September and so far during October is kind of a continuation of what you had in 2022 when the Fed began its interest rate tightening cycle. And, you know, the beginning of this year, the narrative, aside from just the, you know, anything driven by AI drove a, a, a flight to risk, but there's also that, you know, narrative uh, shaping up that, you know, maybe, you know, we might have a, a soft landing and, and mm -hmm. maybe interest rates might actually end up pulling back. But, you know, as it stands, um, you know, it's looking more and more like the Fed is probably going to, um, regardless of what they do at their next meeting in November, um, you know, keep them higher for longer. And that's something, you know, it's hitting the overall market. It's specifically hitting, you know, a lot of the, the growth stocks like the tech space. You know, that said, I, you know, it, it, one thing that we probably do expect to see is that, you know, the inflation figures, you know, it's, it's not a straight line, but they are coming down pretty rapidly. And I think the Fed is probably just maintaining the optionality of hiking one more time in November. In the case that they don't, the market, which you know, still believes there's about a one in three chance the Fed will hike next, as it prices in, you know, that one in three chance goes to zero. That could be a driver or a catalyst for stocks um, in the coming couple of months. Good to know those drivers. But you like, in particular, industrials, REITs, and utilities. Why are those sectors so attractive to you? Well, yeah, it starts with valuation. You know, we're value investors, but you know, you look at industrials. I think that's a space where you know, industrial capacity utilization remains you know, fairly solid. Um, and really, it's just a secular play. You know, you would think that you know the infrastructure theme would be played out because a lot of that legislation was passed, um, you know, going on a couple of years ago. But most of the dollars that are actually going to be spent for that are going to be spent in the next, you know, the next several years. You're looking to see um, construction spending, you know, double next year, then double again in the the couple of years after that. And that's the type of thing that. You know, regardless of whether we have a recession or not, that's it's it's kind of it could end up being counter cyclical. It's something that you have a little bit of visibility, regardless uh, between that as well as the fact that you know, in an increasingly uncertain world with respect to geopolitics, politics, um, you know, defense spending should also drive that space. And you know, valuations still aren't rich in the industrial space. Um, you know, flipping it, you know, utilities. I think you know, industrials tend to be more cyclical. Utilities obviously a, a bit more of a, a, a bit more stable, but mm -hmm. you know, as you've seen this year, you know the utility space has been one of the worst, if not the worst, performing sector in 2023. I, I spoke a few minutes ago about there really has been a flight to risk this year as investors have been increasingly looking at well maybe we end up with a soft landing, and so as such, they've gone to some of the riskier sectors. Utilities have been left in the dust and. Yeah, the yield curve is still inverted, and so you might actually look to that stability. And as of right now, you have valuations on your side. Right now, the utility space has been trading in the low to mid teens okay. um, at a discount to the broader market when you usually you know, pay a premium uh, for that for the utility space. Tell us what's the particular attractiveness of Pioneer Resources. It's one of your stock picks. Uh, that one, tell us why you choose it. Yeah, well, that one, you know, exploration and production company, you know, you're paying 11 times earnings. That's, you know, again, a steep discount to the broader market. And that's pretty good for the ENP space. Uh, it trades at about six times EBITDA. That's even better for the ENP space. And the thing that really appeals to us is that not only do you have a dividend yield of north of 3%, but they've been returning it. They've been buying back a bunch of shares. Last year, the, uh, the total shareholder yield, when you factor in what they paid in dividends as well as what they've paid in repurchases, mm -hmm. was actually around 20%. They actually returned 20% of their market cap to shareholders. So they've been extremely investor friendly. 
they, uh, you know, they dominate one of the, the most important basins, the Permian Basin, okay. and as a result of that, they have some of the best acreage there. They've drilled more wells there than just about anyone. With that experience, it means that they're one of the lowest cost operators, which also makes it more defensive. And, uh, you, know, you know, personally speaking, I, I grew up out in West Texas, and, uh, you know, I've, I'm, I'm familiar with some of these folks. And, you know, you've got some of the smartest people in the oil patch there, and they're getting more efficient, mm -hmm. you know, on their earnings call. They lowered their capex forecasts while raising their production growth forecasts. So that's you know just really on both sides of the coin exactly what you want to see in a name like that. I see that is, and we're looking at the end of this. But Burns McKinney, thank you so much for joining us from NFJ Investment Group. We really appreciate you coming here on Market on Close on Schwab Network.